Hey everybody, welcome to Tired Old Queen at the Movies. This week I am in Syracuse. I'm in rehearsals for a show. All the info will be in the box below, um, or as some people like to call it, the doobly-doo. Now let's go see the Tired Old Queen at the Movies and get this week's recommendation. Oh, Johnny! Tired Old Queen at the Movies. Johnny! In 1940, producer David O. Selznick brought Alfred Hitchcock over from England to make his very first motion picture. And that year, it was chosen as the best picture of the year. Alfred Hitchcock's film version of Daphne du Maurier's Rebecca. Now this was a very, very popular novel about a woman who marries a widow that she meets in Monte Carlo. And she's very, very mousy. She's very, very shy. She's been the, the companion of a gargoyle of a woman who has taken her all over Monte Carlo. He never talks about it, of course, but he's a broken man. I suppose I'd better have it. Mm. Wretched stuff. Give me a chocolate quick. And this man is kind to her. She falls madly in love with him, and it turns out he owns the biggest estate one of them in England, he called Mandalay. That's it. That's Mandalay. He takes her back to Mandalay, where she meets the formidable housekeeper, Mrs. Danvers, who is preserving the memory of the dead first wife, Rebecca de Winter. I've managed the house since Mrs. de Winter's death, and Mr. de Winter has never complained. Now, a great casting coup took place in Hollywood to try to find out who was going to play the part of this girl. Everybody wanted it. And because Selznick had done the same thing looking for Scarlett O'Hara the year before in Gone with the Wind, he decided it was the perfect publicity angle. So every actress in Hollywood tried out for it. Now, the ones that were really down to the wire with it were Loretta Young, Margaret Sullivan, Ann Baxter, who was only 16 years old at the time, Vivian Lee, who had just done Gone with the Wind, and Joan Fontaine. I am Mrs. De Winter now. Lawrence Olivier had just come off with Ring Heights and he wanted Vivian Lee as he wanted her for everything to play that part. But Vivian Lee was still talking a little bit too much like like Scarlett O'Hare where she couldn't really really play that part yet. Are all the things in the morning room very valuable? Yes, I, I think so. Were they always there when your mother was alive? No, as a matter of fact, I don't believe they were. So consequently, she didn't get the role. And Olivier sort of was uh, snubbed Joan Fontaine throughout this movie. And Hitchcock encouraged that. In fact, he encouraged all the actors to kind of not talk to her while she was doing this movie to keep her off balance and insecure. For the role of the evil housekeeper, they got Dame Judith Anderson, an Australian stage actress who was magnificent. This is where I keep all her clothes. Would like to see them, wouldn't you? There's obvious a lesbian connection. She's obviously in love with her mistress. Feel this. And gradually, she's driving this poor girl crazy. You've nothing to live for, really, have you? Look down there. It's easy, isn't it? And Hitchcock has such a way of creating this character, Rebecca, that you actually can see her without ever seeing her. There's a scene towards the end of the movie where Max, who's played by Laurence Olivier, is describing the final night of Rebecca's life and a confrontation the two of them had. And Hitchcock places the camera in a subjective way and you watch her as he describes her coming across the room. And you can, and the way he describes her, it's so perfect and the way it's shot, you can actually almost see her and the kind of woman that she was, a manipulative, evil woman. She was face to face with me. One hand in her pocket, the other holding a cigarette. She was smiling. But the performance that stays with you is Joan Fontaine because she carries the picture as this character and you watch this beautiful arc that she creates. She was nominated for the Oscar, but she didn't get it. She got it the next year for a movie called Suspicion, which Hitchcock directed. And it was sort of a consolation prize because she didn't get it for Rebecca. But it's a lovely performance. And, and Judith Anderson is unforgettable as Mrs. Danvers. <laughs> One, I remember once um, years ago, I dyed my hair black and um, <laughs> it turned out jet black. And I mean jet black. 
So I couldn't get any, do anything about it. And I'm walking down the street and I'm trying not to let anybody see me. And I look across the street and my ex is coming up the street. And I look down like this so he wouldn't see me. And just as I look up, he's passing me. And as he passes me, he looks at me and he goes, I loved you and Rebecca. This is Dan versus. <laughs> anyway, you're going to love Laurence Olivier, Joan Fontaine, Judith Anderson, Gladys Cooper, and Nigel Bruce, and Alfred Hitchcock's Rebecca. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat.